The National Center for School Safety was asked by the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office following the shooting on November 30th to meet with victim families. The organization says they listened to these families and tried to work through what ideas they had for the Oxford Community School District. The National Center for School Safety, they offer grant opportunities to policing agencies, school districts across the nation, and municipalities. In Genesee County, they have awarded money to the Genesee Intermediate School District, Vassar Public Schools, Grand Blank Police Department. The money is called a stop grant, and applications for the funding is available right now. They have about 850 grantees across the nation. They are funded through a federal grant program by the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Right, because you can imagine schools um, are that, that we speak to are often stretched thin. You have all the different demands on teachers' time, educators' time, administration's time, and we don't want to see uh, safety, uh, safety programming fall by the wayside. Justin Hines is co-director of the National Center for School Safety. He says they try to help schools implement a program, whether it is for safety, threat assessment, or even mental health resources. And our job is to try to facilitate connections to uh, those that might advise or to help them implement their programming. Hines says this funding is needed right now more than ever, given how challenging the last two years have been for some people. We recognize that there has been a, a nationwide or worldwide trauma uh, that students are still and will continue to grapple with for years to come. And so understanding some of that post-traumatic stress, understanding how that's affecting their learning environments is going to be critical. Listen to the Silence. It's a film directed and produced by Calvin Ray. He says it was inspired by deaths by suicide. Following a screening of the film in Flint last November, he had a question and answer period for the audience with licensed therapists and counselors on hand. We ran out of time. Um, many people have more questions than I even had anticipated for, but they really wanted to know the depth of mental health. Now, Ray, executive director of Destiny Power Center, is finding another way to listen to the silence with a summit to be held in Flint at the Sylvester Broom Empowerment Village Center. This wonderful hope and healing summit that we have on Saturday, April 23rd. He says there will be a number of workshops and 15 speakers. Advice on how to cope or mechanisms um, that they can use to uh, deal with everyday life. According to a Brown University and Boston University study published last fall, about a third of adults say they had experience increased symptoms of depression in 2021 compared to 28 percent at the start of the pandemic in 2020 and 8.5 percent before the pandemic. Everybody was just and still is anticipating this. I can't wait to get back to normalcy. I don't think there's ever a chance we will get back to normalcy. So we've got to adjust. The adjustment period is really what's difficult for a lot of people, especially our kids. He says it's OK to not be OK but that it's not okay to stay there. One thing about mental health, it doesn't have a color, it doesn't have a gender, it doesn't have a date specific, it just affects you. It used to be called Autism Awareness Month, but experts now believe it's time to shift the focus towards how we can get society to better accept those on the spectrum. Mid Michigan Al's Remy Murray is here and you've spoken with a man who hopes his story can inspire others. I did, Mike, and it was very touching. I want everyone to meet John Patton. He's a 39-year-old autistic man who has had to overcome many challenges throughout his life. So he hopes his story will inspire more people to make sure those who are autistic feel seen and heard. I want to serve as a role model out there and just motivate the younger crowd because, yeah, it's uh, hard. Oh, I mean, I have to admit, it's hard. As a young kid, Patton describes himself as very smart and talkative. He says he and his family recognized he was off, but he didn't receive his final confirmation until a visit at Eastern Michigan University's Autism Center. I found out when I was like, let's see, 32. About eight years ago, 2014. Before his diagnosis, Patton admits he faced tons of roadblocks along his path. I had a hard time getting work after college, and that was back in 2005. He remained persistent and worked in retail for 15 years. Now he serves as a quality control systems representative at Gateway Pediatric Therapy, which he tells me would have been a big help in his younger years. As far as Gateway, uh, back, uh, back in the 90s and stuff, something like that would have helped me because there wasn't really boxes or categories for people like me back in the 90s when I would have um, 
need to get assistance. A reason the Pediatric Therapy Center is advocating for more acceptance rather than awareness. Clinical Director Elizabeth Elias says a lot of the ideas surrounding autism awareness include how we can help people with autism better adjust into our culture. She believes the focus should now shift towards how we can make society more accepting for people on the spectrum. I think when people hear autism, they only see the disability and the deficits, whereas autism has so many benefits and it doesn't really make people any different than people who are neurotypical. So I think John is a great example. He's such a fun guy to work with, and he's also very talented. From his interview, Patton hopes society will see he is one of many living on the spectrum and will make necessary changes for his community to feel more seen and heard.